Hi, welcome to this video about gradient-based optimizations in Mitsuba 3. My name is Nicolas Roussel, and I'm a research engineer working on the Mitsuba renderer. As you might know, Mitsuba 3 is a differentiable renderer and can help you solve complex inverse rendering problems. In this video, we will go through a simple gradient-based optimization example that will teach you the basics of Mitsuba's differentiable rendering features. I recommend you watch the previous video in this series. It will help you understand some of the rudimentary aspects of Mitsuba. Let's get started. We begin by importing Mitsuba and setting a variant, as you would do in any other Mitsuba use case. However, for differentiable rendering, an AD-enabled variant has to be used. Here, AD stands for Automatic Differentiation. The just-in-time compiler that Mitsuba uses, Dr. Jit, takes care of targeting different backends, CPU or GPU, vectorizing our code, but also of tracking all parts of our computations to then compute gradients, similarly to other automatic differentiation frameworks. Check out Dr. Jit's documentation if you want to learn more about how it works. Before we can jump into the optimization, we need a scene that provides a starting point. Here, we're loading it from an XML file, but it could have been defined as a Python dictionary as well. Let's also quickly render it to see what we're dealing with. Once a scene has been loaded, you will often need to access or even change its parameters. For example, I want to know and update the Redwall's BSDF reflectance value. For this, Mitsuba provides a traverse function that can be used on practically any Mitsuba object and will allow you to inspect its parameters. This function returns an object of type scene parameters. We'll go over some of its API together now, but know that you can always look up Mitsuba's documentation or use Python's built-in help function if you need detailed explanations about any Mitsuba object. Firstly, the string representation of the object will show you a table of all the parameters in your scene or rather the object you traversed. The very first column is the names of the parameters. The second column holds a set of flags which can indicate whether a parameter is differentiable or not and if it can introduce discontinuities. The third column indicates the type of the parameter. And finally, the last column will tell you the parent plugin of the parameter. If you want to know more about what a specific parameter does, this last column will tell you the name of the plugin to look up in the plugin documentation, where you'll find detailed explanations about the meaning and behavior of its parameters. A scene parameters object has a similar interface to a Python dictionary. To look up or modify a parameter, you can just index into it using the parameter's name. Using this, let's make that red wall blue. Lastly, the object has an update method that will update or recompute any internal state that depends on the parameters that were changed. This is usually a crucial step that should not be forgotten. These scene parameters objects, along with the traverse function, are the two key mechanisms in Mitsuba 3 that will allow you to inspect and modify parameters. Right now, if we render our scene again, we can see that the right wall has indeed changed. Our goal for this video will be to recover the original scene, meaning the red wall, by optimizing the BSDF's reflectance value. Of course, this is a very simple example where we'll be optimizing just a few parameters. But Mitsuba can handle millions of parameters simultaneously, and that's when it truly gets interesting. We can finally get into the differentiable rendering features of Mitsuba. A gradient-based optimization usually requires an optimizer that defines how steps are taken between each iteration of our optimization loop. Mitsuba ships with a few of them. Here, we'll initialize an Atom optimizer with an arbitrary learning rate. We now need to make the optimizer aware of the parameters it will be updating. The optimizer classes in Mitsuba also have a dictionary-like interface, and so we can simply pass it the parameters of our scene that we intend to optimize. We also need to inform the scene parameters object that the reflectance value is now tracked by our optimizer, so we have to call the update method again. Note that the scene parameters object will know how to handle your optimizers if you have kept the same parameter name in each class. The last ingredient we need before writing our optimization loop is an objective function. Using functions of Dr. Jit, we can easily define the mean square error. Finally, we're here, where the magic happens, the gradient descent loop. We start off by rendering the scene and computing the loss. Nothing surprising here. The next step is a call to Dr. Jit's backward function. This will trigger the just-in-time compiler to backpropagate our loss through the computation graph it recorded. In our case, that's the rendering process. 
and it will backpropagate our loss up to the parameter we enabled with the optimizer. Now, this only computed the gradient and stored it internally. The use of the method step is what actually computes a gradient step according to the Adam algorithm and writes the new value of the parameter in the optimizer. Note that at this point, depending on the step that was just taken, your parameter might have left the domain in which it is well defined. So you might have to apply a post-processing step to clamp it back to a specific range, for example. Finally, as mentioned previously, it is always very important to call update on your scene parameters object after one of its values has changed. Otherwise, the desired scene updates will not take place. There we have it. A bit more bookkeeping is needed to track our loss, if desired, but the core functionality holds within these few lines. All that is left to do is run the loop and watch our scene converge. Under the hood, there is quite a lot happening here, and I recommend that you read Mitsuba and Dr. Jade's documentation to get a better understanding of the finer details. You will even find a tutorial that covers the same topics as this video, but a bit more in depth. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please join us on the discussions tab of our GitHub repository. You'll find all the links in the video description. See you next time.